So what type of projects do we work on take zero? question could actually take another form. What are digital transformation projects, right? So what is, not what is digital transformation, but if you're going to be doing digital transformation, what type of projects will you be working on? So I'm going to talk about what those projects look like and give you some examples of some projects we're currently working on right now here at Intellic. All right, so the type of projects that we work on cover the whole automation stack. So you guys should be familiar with this by now. Probably what we do the least amount of is this. And I would say most integrators do the majority of their work at the PLC HMI layer. We don't really do a whole lot of PLC HMI stuff. We do modify a lot of PLC code to put in objects that are going to be in our unified namespace and so that our other applications can consume them. But we do uh, lots of SCADA deployments. What's the difference between the traditional, the industry 3.0 systems integrator and the industry 4.0 systems integrator like us? We create self-aware SCADA systems. So one of the projects that we're currently working on right now, we're actually closing it out, is a self-aware SCADA system in a gold plating line application. So that self-aware SCADA system is essentially designed, it's built in Ignition. It uses a unified namespace, which is shared by our Ignition MES system as well. And the fundamental element of this SCADA system is the customer can add instruments out in the field. They can add a new pH sensor, they can add a flow meter, they can add a level sensor, they can add a temperature sensor. And if they add any of the existing objects that are, so any sensor that already exists in the system, the ignition SCADA system will pick up that sensor, generate all of the tags, and generate the visualizations on the screen. Essentially, if I plug a pH sensor in on a cell that it didn't exist before, it will appear in the system automatically. I don't need an engineer to do that, all right? So that's an example of a project we do at the SCADA layer. That's something we're doing right now. At the MES layer, we do a lot of MES systems, primarily because this is what's what's missing in the market. There aren't a lot of people who have MES. Also, most people who do MES do a really, really bad job at it, um, unfortunately. There are most MES solutions out in the market are very, very narrow and very, very limited. Uh, they're pretty much standalone. They'll always tell you that it'll talk to your ERP system and generally they don't. Uh, most of the stuff we do with MES is the same thing, self-aware MES. And how do we achieve that? We achieve that by using MQTT and IIoT projects. So right now, we are working on several MES projects, and they're all enterprise class. We're doing, right now, we're currently working on, I think, four MES projects. One of them's been going on for about three years. Another one's been going on for two years. And we have one that just kicked off a really, really large enterprise MES system that's using uh, MES 4.0, which is our MES solution built in Ignition. This MES system is also self-aware, built on top of MQTT. So essentially what happens is the objects live down in the PLC, that is our MES object in feed out, feed waste, and state. And those objects are published into an MQTT broker. So they just show up as tags using the MQTT engine inside of Ignition. And then our MES engine can consume those tags from the namespace. It's a way, I mean, we generally never lose a bid. We're, our, we're always the lowest cost when we go head to head with another integrator. And it's because we're using technologies that the integrators just aren't using. When, they, when, when our quote is $150,000 to do this massive system and everyone else quotes $750,000, they don't understand how we can do that. And it's because of the approach we take with digital transformation and IoT. Support other integrators, like helping them figure out how they can quote projects more? Sure, absolutely. And we, but let, with the caveat, we support other integrators who share our values. If you're an integrator who whose number one goal is the bottom line, you really just shouldn't call us. Um, I, we're not going to help you. That's not my number. It's not my goal. My goal is not the bottom line. I don't see I don't see the world as a zero-sum game. There are some integrators that we've worked with who have burned us, and that just actually happened like in the last few months. But we do work with other integrators, and we basically check off the boxes. Does this integrator, are they mission-driven? Are they values-based? Do they, are they innovative? Do they leverage bleeding-edge technology? Do they understand the entire stack? If they don't, then they've got to go through the, tra the same training our team goes through so that we can get them up to speed so they know us, right? So uh, at the MES layer, we're, we, we, that's the type of project we work at the MES layer. At the ERP layer, we do a lot of, right now we're actually doing a project in Dallas we've been working on for about a year, which is a, it's a combination of ERP and MES. 
So it's all built in Ignition. Again, this is an Ignition solution. Actually, we have Factory Studio, we have Canary Labs, and we have uh, Sorba IoT at this facility as well. But it's a project that is ERP MES, fully integrated with a unified namespace. Basically, we this client gave us their entire plant and allowed us to build the perfect solution. That's basically what they've done. And it is our demo plant. It's the plant that we demo to all of our other customers to show them here's what's possible if you believe in the technology, you hire the right partners, you bring in the right people, and you get out of the way. So at the ERP layer, uh, what we're doing a lot of the a lot of what we're doing is unifying the namespace between MES and ERP. So the the namespace that's used to organize your business at the ERP is the same namespace that's used to manage your process data coming from the edge in the MES system, but all the way through warehouse management the whole, the whole nine. And then on the cloud side, in digital transformation projects, we are working on machine learning and AI. Right now we have two machine learning AI projects active, one based here in Dallas, another one based up north, and one of them's using the Sorba IoT platform, the other one's using TensorFlow with Google. Um, a lot of what we're testing in terms of big data and cloud-based analytics is what is the path of least resistance and what is the most scalable machine learning and AI solution out on the market. One of the things that's really important to talk about in terms of the projects that we work on and the approach that we take to the market is, is this. Number one, we approach all projects as one part of a bigger whole. Okay, what does that mean? So as an integrator, as a, di as a, as a digital transformation artist, as, a, as an industry 4.0 solutions provider, you have to approach every project, every solution as a part of a bigger whole, as a module of a much larger solution. You're building on top of what you've already created. You never approach a project as standalone, okay? It's not a standalone entity. It is a living, breathing process that's building on top of what's come before it, and it's going to be the foundation of what comes after it, okay? So number one, that's one of the key things that we do. Number two, we are framework-centric, okay? What does that mean? We never build something we're not gonna use again, okay? So what that means is whenever we're looking at developing a solution, whether we're building that in Factory Studio or Wonderware or Ignition, which is the, the, the solution provider that we use the most, although we're using Factory Studio a lot more than, than uh, we had been. If you look at, at, at the last year versus this year, we approach everything as a framework. Um, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about when it comes to a framework, uh, there are other videos that we've covered on what is framework-centric development. Okay, but we approach everything as framework-centric. That is, I'm basically wireframing the underlying architecture, and then I'm using that wireframe over and over and over again. Whether I'm using it over and over and over again within, for, within the enterprise of an existing organization, or whether I'm using it over and over again between organizations, we approach everything framework-centric. Number three, we're agile. Gotta be agile, man. It is literally not possible. If I am a customer, if I'm an end user, and I send out a bid to, a, uh, and by the way, we don't do bids, but if, if you send out a bid to, for your digital transformation project, and your integrator comes back with a waterfall schedule with milestones, run. If they tell you that the way that they manage their projects is like this, run, okay? Because here's what I can guarantee you. You will not end up with what you want at the end without a million change orders. It's just not possible. You have to be agile in digital transformation because there's no way to achieve all of the knowledge you have to have to be successful until you get into the project. And being agile allows you to account for the things that you've learned and the opinions that have changed during this process, okay? And number four, we only work with clients who invest in their resources. Okay, and I, we tell our clients this a lot actually. We do not work with clients who want us to go deep and stay long, want us to be their long-term engineering firm and they're basically hiring us to give them engineering labor. That's not who we are. We only work with clients who invest in their internal talent. We will tell them the types of people that they have to hire and then we will train those people to support these overall solutions that we're building. What's really, really important to understand is that digital transformation is not turnkey. It is a process, okay? And what you're doing is you're building a framework, right? You are building a solution that's one part of a bigger whole that will grow with the organization. It's not like a piece of equipment that you purchase 
and you do a runoff, an FAT at the very end, and that machine does exactly what the requirements were, and the engineering firm walks away and installs a new piece of machinery. What you are doing is building a living, breathing process that you have to be able to support. And so if you don't invest in resources to support it, we will fail. And that's something we'll cover in a later video. So anyway, th those are the types of projects that we work on. There's a bunch of projects that we're working on right now. Actually, every project that we are working on right now, I think we have 17 or 18 active projects. Every single one of our active projects is a digital transformation, industry 4.0, IIoT solution. Many of them, most of them actually, are falling in this that space there, the ERP MES space. But remember, working with us is working one part of a bigger whole, framework-centric, agile, and with clients who invest in their resources. If you want to be successful as a systems integrator doing digital transformation, your approach to your solutions needs to mirror this somewhat. Yeah, the, I mean, maybe the words change, but the concept's the same.